So here we are with today's knowledge nugget. The topic for today is one of the key cornerstones of emotional intelligence, and it is all about relational relationships. Now, you're going to ask me, how does it work in business? In business context, uh, I'm actually reminded of this quote by Brad Sugar, and I quote him. He says, business is all about relationships. How well you build them determines how well they build your business. In a world where we are constantly connected, it's those people with the best people skills that win the day. It is those people where who can build the right relationships. And these are some suggestions for us to begin to cultivate these. So let's take it one by one. Increase diversity in connection. So this means that connect with people who are not like you. Expand your perspective. So as I like to say, diversify your relationship portfolio. Develop a deepness of curiosity. We just spoke about curiosity, didn't we? So curiosity begets intrigue. So as and how you show more of genuine interest to know more about the other person, you start creating a depth. You start creating a depth of curiosity and you start towards building your relationships. Develop your stories. I'm talking here about your life story. Our life is made up of stories. We all know that. And they are filled with a rainbow of emotions. So why not share a couple of chapters of your life to start beginning a human connection with people? Develop your life story in such a way that gets people interested in you and your life. Go ahead and develop your life story. Your life is your story. Write well. Edit often. Smile. A smile usually brings upon another smile. And if I can't make you smile right now, it's not really working, is it? <laughs> but a smile is sort of an icebreaker of thought. But yes, use this tip wisely when you are with strangers or in new cultures. So begin to cultivate, have a diversified relationship, a diversified relationship portfolio, begin to have curiosity and genuine interest in other people, develop your life story, and definitely smile a bit. So to practice these, these are the things that are actually going to make you nurture those relationships. So you can get skill yourself on actually having conversations, make them more meaningful and make them connected on an emotional level with the people. Offer interest and appreciation. And how do you think you can practice these? Why not try with a two or three conversation that you have regularly with people and you think that you need to actually take the relationship at a deeper level? See whether you can offer some interest in appreciation and make it meaningful and emotionally connected. And that's how you start practicing them. How do you use others' perspectives? By that I mean involve people in your world. We all love to be a part of something, don't we? Whether it's an idea, a thought, a project, a cause, a team. When you involve people in your world, that builds rapport. And that also adds on to inclusiveness. And additionally, you might learn something new from the other person. We know by now that our reactions are what we are in control of. And what we are in control of, we can choose from, right? So choose your reactions and responses wisely, well, to build your relationship. So start nurturing your relationship by meaningful and emotionally level connected. Involve people in your world, offer interest and appreciation, and yes, deep conversations with the right people are definitely priceless. So here we come to the crux of relational relationship to emotional intelligence. Knowing when to have the appropriate connections, appropriate emotions at the appropriate time and the appropriate reactions leads to making appropriate choices. And that, my friends, is emotional intelligence. I'm sure you can't help but notice the word appropriate. So it's all about acting out and behaving in a suitable manner in different circumstances. So what I mean to say is that please operate from your wise mind. 
and do not operate absolutely from your rational mind or your emotional mind. So there is a sweet spot between the two, which we call as the wise mind, and that is where your emotional intelligence is on the right. So now that we have understood what we have to practice, how we have to nurture, and why relationships are important, the next step is plan your improvement, and that usually happens via self-inquiry. So it's time to question yourself. How well do you connect with those who are closest to you? How well do you connect with those who you don't know yet? And I mean to say, those people that you meet in the park, maybe when you're walking, people who you meet in the elevator, on board a flight, maybe a bus or a train, or a, um, even in a party. Are you able to strike a conversation with them, or are you tongue-tied? What areas of the communication do you need to improve? Where do you think that you need to work upon? Is it your listening skills? Is it your body language? Is it your tone? Is it your language finesse? It's time to identify those gaps. And once you've identified those gaps, question yourself that how will you improve in these areas? And what practices or activities do you need to start participating in or improving in for your communication skills? And last but not the least, my favorite question, when are you going to start taking action on all these plans that you've just done? Plans, my friends, are just some feel good statements on a I will do list if they are not followed by action. And consistent action is what leads to your desired improvement. And this is what the emotional intelligence wisdom says. The quality of our life is determined by the quality of our relationship. Every interaction that you have with anyone is an opportunity to learn something and to give something. And that's it from this knowledge nugget from today. Thank you for listening and hope you found that useful.